Hey folks, David Stewart here. So here is a question that I often get on the channel. How long should my book be? Or how long should a book be? How long is too long? And the problem with trying to answer that question is that there are many, many, many different answers to it, most of which are correct. Because it depends on what kind of book you're writing, what genre you're in, how you're gonna publish it, how big the story is, your story efficiency, and also, before I can even talk about that, I have to talk about what book length actually means. So that's what I want to start this video with, is digging into what book length means. Now, for those of us who are in the business, you'll notice that we almost never mention pages. We never say that a book is so many pages long. What we really are usually talking about is word count. It is so many thousands of words long. So why is it that we talk about word count rather than talk about um, page numbers? So the answer is because you can actually format a book in a variety of different ways and it will, for the same amount of words and the same amount of story, look completely differently. So I have three different books here, one of which is one of mine. This is Voices of the Void. You can get this on Amazon for 99 cents for the ebook. Um, this is about a 24,000 word book and you see it comes out to be about 90 total pages. Now 90 pages is not very long for a book. Uh, you know, you think most books are like 200 plus pages, uh, but this is intended to be a rather short book um, and it's a a rather efficiently told story, if I do say so myself. So uh, I could actually make this shorter than 90 pages if I wanted to, and that would be if I were to format it more like uh, this book here. This is an old, um, this is an old Michael Moorcock book, and if you open this up, you'll you can notice right away that the words are much more tightly packed together. The margins are much smaller. Um, there's no spacing between the lines, and the font is also smaller. So the font on this is like a 10 or maybe even an 8 point, and this is actually an 11 point font. Um, and you could even go up to 12, and you notice that the spacing between the lines is broader. That makes it for me easier to read. So I wanted to make a good product that still, you know, was book roughly book size. You also notice that this book is bigger. So the bigger your book is, the more pages you get to fit on it, which again changes the number of pages without changing the actual length of the book. So if we look at this book, um, you'll see that this the there's a wide, wide spacing between all the lines. This is set in Times New Roman, by the way. Um, other fonts are gonna change the length as well. Times New Roman is a fairly uh, condensed and easy to work with font. It's not something you have to avoid for book interiors. Don't believe the hype with that. But for this same book, I could pick out the paperback. This book is about, how long is it? Uh, you know, it's uh, over 200 pages. Um, you could get the paperback and it would be actually significantly shorter. So this 200 page book is about 60,000 words, just so you guys know. Whereas we dig into Michael Moorcock, we see it's only 175 pages, but this book is actually longer. It's closer to 90,000 words. So this book, even though it's much smaller, much thinner, fewer pages, has uh, more words in it. it, is a longer book to read. This is assuming that you're gonna read words at all the, basically the same pace. So this book is longer than this book. Not only is it longer though, this is the next thing. So the way that you format your manuscript is gonna change radically how thick the book is. Just one more example here, here's two of mine. Here's the original edition of Muramasa and here's the revised edition. You can see that I went with a bigger book size for the revised edition and you can see that they're different lengths. Now the thing about this, this one is uh, about 500 pages um, and it's set with bright white paper because I wanted the bright white paper for this one but uh, the exact same type typeface setting is in this one, right? It's a Garamond and Garamond. Same, same basic line spacing and everything is in this one. But this one is only uh, 337 pages. So 337 pages versus almost 500. I've cut, uh, I've cut 150 pages out of this book simply by going to a larger cut size to a six by nine instead of an eight by five while keeping the font size the same, keeping basically everything else the same. So when people ask how many pages is your book, it's like, well, it's you know 500 pages, right? Now for word count length, because that's what we're talking about, this one and this one are the same length. They're just shy of 120,000 words if my memory serves me. Um, so 120,000 words produces 340 
pages. That's not too bad. Um, that's a pretty sizable book. And uh, if you were to get this in a mass market paperback, it might be thicker. It might be 450 pages and be much tighter spacing like this. This is a mass market paperback. Um, so this one is only about 24,000 words and it's 90 pages. Um, so depending on the, the page size cut you use, you can get it to be longer or shorter. Now this one is cheaper to produce than this one because of the way that this one's produced. It's a print on demand application, uh, which basically means that they print the book right when someone orders it and mail it to you rather than say uh, printing up a, a huge number and then mailing them when people order them. Um, and because of that, it's actually the same price per page no matter your cut size. So it's preferable to go with a bigger book and sell the book more cheaply. And it's still very substantial. It's a nice, big, thick book. Uh, but conversely, the, uh, the same size hardback, six by nine hardback, can produce far, you know, uh, you know, with just a, f a little bit less pages can produce far fewer words, depending on how you typeset it. This is a much more generous typesetting even than what I use for this. And I try to make a very readable document. Um, the next thing there though is what I call story efficiency, because it's not just how you typeset your manuscript, it's what's in your manuscript that will determine the total length of the book. If you are a very, very efficient writer, which I try to be with these smaller books like this one and um, this one over here, Crown of Sight, which is a, the high fantasy uh, mini book. I've, I've been experimenting with these shorter books. Um, this is an extremely efficient storytelling style that I, that I went for. Um, and most people who've read it say, yeah, there's a ton of story packed into this very small book. Uh, there's more story packed into this book than a typical like 400 page fantasy novel in terms of all the stuff that's happening. And how did I do that? Well, it has to do with the way that I write prose, but really has to do with what I actually choose to put in the book. So rather than having long superfluous scenes of characters talking or exposing the setting, um, I skip the world building stuff and I just jump into action and have the characters reacting always to action, which is relevant for the overall plot goals. They develop their characters through those scenes and uh, I have a bunch of individual scenes not connected by long prose. Basically a scene ends and the next one begins just like if you were watching a movie, which makes for a very efficient presentation. Let's me cram a lot of story into a pretty small space here. Likewise, if I go back to looking at the, the Michael Moorcock, um, there's more story in this than in several of these Stephen King books. There's more story in The Vanishing Tower than in like the first, maybe the entire Dark Tower, right? And this is a series. And it has to do with the fact that Michael Moorcock writes in a very efficient style. He plows through the plot very directly. Um, he doesn't spend a lot of time on superfluous characterization scenes and instead goes straight into the characters exposing themselves entirely through the plot. This makes for a much quicker read for the same amount of story and in my opinion makes for a more interesting read than a lot of longer books. So if you pick up a Michael Moorcock book and you're like, well, this is a short little uh, nothing of a book. Keep in mind that because of his story efficiency, it's actually a much more epic book than what you would get in sometimes several books in a modern series. Uh, and this has to do just with efficiency. Same thing with older writers like Robert E. Howard, H.P. Lovecraft. They were able to tell their stories in a small amount of space because that was the way that they got them published. Um, so as a result, the amount of story events can be much higher with a, with a shorter book depending on how you write. And depending on what genre you're writing in, you may want to pursue that or you, it may not be something that you need to pursue or even think about. It just kind of depends what you're writing. Um, let me finally tie all this together and give just a couple of really broad guidelines for figuring out your book length. First of all, if you're in the Storycraft series that I've done, um, talking about writing and publishing a book in six weeks, we are shooting for a book that's pretty short. It's a novella, right? It's a little novel. Um, Old Man in the Sea or shorter. Old Man in the Sea, I think, is 33,000 words, uh, which is by Ernest Hemingway. Uh, the book doesn't have to be incredibly long to be good. Um, there's lots of short books that have been extremely popular over the years, uh, and yours could be one of them. So um, we're shooting for this. This is a, a very efficient style. This is not the length of book that you would probably expect a traditional publisher to ever publish. There's a bunch of reasons for that, but usually they're going to want something that is north of 80,000 words, 80,000 to 100,000 words, depending on the genre. 
you could go as short as 60,000, especially with young adult li literature, or you can go as, as high as 120,000 with um, fantasy literature. But I will say that over the, the last 10 years or so, the length of fantasy novels put out by traditional publishers has gone up and up and up to the point where you could put out your first fantasy novel at 200,000 words if they like the story because the market uh, will probably buy it anyway. Whereas in other genres, if it's a big, thick book that you know that may not be what the market wants unless it's a really recognizable author. So the length of traditional published books has gone up and up, but whereas our, those have gone up, the independent ones have gone down because turns out if you're competing for a reader's attention to try to get them and entertain them, a shorter, more efficient book ends up producing a better experience for readers. So readers tend to really gravitate towards the more efficient reads I've noticed, at least in the genres that I write in, which is mostly science fiction and fantasy. Um, well, I can't speak for every single other genre. You kind of have to figure that out depending on what you're writing. Likewise, if you're writing something like Kindle erotica, it can be very short, like 10,000 words, and still sell for 99 cents with no problems and have nobody feel like it's too short. Um, or it can be incredibly long. Uh, it just it depends on what you're doing. So there's no hard and fast rule for how long it needs to be if you're an independent person. However, you can make them shorter than they would otherwise be able to be published. If you were writing a 20,000 word novella, it'd actually be very difficult to get that published um, in a traditional route. You'd either have to publish as part of like a literary magazine somewhere and then put it in a collection, but you know, or, or just not have it be published or put it in with another novel. But in this case, because if we're going independent and we're doing it all on our own, we can have them be whatever length we want. Novellas are great. We can actually publish 20,000 word books that people really enjoy and it's it's no issue. So um, one more thing, uh, was there any other books I'll show you? Yeah, so the Needle Ash books, when I did those, those are in the 30 to 40,000 word range. They're a little thicker, uh, but likewise, I like these short reads because people can pick them up and read them in a short amount of time, like two hours, enjoy the story and move on. I think that that's been pretty good. So there's no hard and fast rule, but you know, you need to think critical about what you're actually going to include in your story. If you're throwing in everything in the kitchen sink into your story, it may be far longer than it needs to be for the amount of plot that's there. And that to me is, is something that is really hard to just give advice on. You're gonna to have to figure that out for your own story. So anyway, thanks so much for watching this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. The Write Stream happens every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Right now we're doing a free writing and publishing course. You can jump in at any time and finish after we're done. And uh, I'm going through all the steps to write and publish, including how to format your book and all that kind of good stuff when we get to the publication phase in a couple of weeks. So thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time.